Hi, I'm Bobby from Dig Coding, and today I'm going to show you how to use Google's APIs to auto populate addresses and then also get directions between two geographic points. So, this is the project that you can see on the screen here. Um, it opens up on the home page, which is routing, and um, you have a start address and a destination address. Uh, let's reload that page. There was a typo. There you go. It's got a destination address. And if you were to plumb in just any old, it, it defaults to the UK. So UK address is only for this project, but you can alter it for anywhere in the world really. You just need to change the JavaScript. And if we then in the destination put 312 or wherever, let's go Glasgow. What it then does, it, um, it then redirects you to a different URL, which is map. And then it adds a parameter string here with the latitude, longitude of two points. It gives you some kind of metadata, sort of start, destination, address, the duration. So this is in hours and minutes. It takes seven, nearly seven hours to drive from London to Glasgow. Uh, that's about right. Uh, distance, 667 kilometers. And this is the map. So it's an interactive map that comes straight from Google. And if you click here in directions, it will then give you a step-by-step -step breakdown of the directions from, um, where are we? Buckingham Palace Road, Victoria all the way through to um, West Princess Street. So it's a great project actually, and it'd be great for if you wanted to just slot this into something you're working on. Um, I have got it on GitHub. I'll add the link in the description, but uh, let's jump straight into GitHub now. This is the repository, so it's did Django Google Maps API, and there's a readme file. Very, very easy. You need to fire up a directory, a virtual environment, and then clone this repository. All you need is a Google API key, slot that into settings.py and run a server and it will work. What you must make sure, however, is that you've got the directions API enabled, the geocoding API enabled, maps JavaScript API and places API. I have got distance matrix API here on here that's enabled, but we're not using it for this project, so don't worry about that. We use places API to auto populate the addresses. We use the geocode in the other two to then take those points and convert it into a map and directions. So let's jump into the project. I've already got a command prompt CMD open here and the server is already running. It does say here that I've got some unapplied migrations, but the project will work without applying those migrations. I think in the readme file it does say migrate and make migrations. You don't need to. So if we jump into the settings.py file, you can see that we're importing OS because we've got static files in this project. The only app that we've got is the main app, which is in the installed apps here. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. And the only thing that we've added here is a few static file variables. Uh, because like I say, we've got static files, a logo, and we've got a few CSS and JavaScript files that we're using. Um, and the only other thing we need to be aware of here is the Google API key. So that's what we get from Google, and you have to enable those API uh, products. That's it in terms of settings, the URLs, nothing fancy here. We're importing settings and static from Django Conf, and we've added the main URLs to the patterns and the static files to the patterns if we're in debug mode, which we are in this project. So if we look into the main project, uh, we've got a few templates. The views aren't doing too much. Uh, we've got a root URL which passes through the Google API key. We've got a map URL which is also passing the Google API key. But what it's getting is the, remember when we said we were being rerouted to a URL with a, a parameter string? Well, the view is taking a parameter string and it's firing it off to a directions mixin, which is here, mixins.py. So we're using requests. So in requirements, Oh, I need a pip before, let's, let's do that quickly. Pip freeze. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a few extra bits in there now. Um, so we're using requests because we're actually um, to get the directions, we're using a, a, the requests library to get a JSON response from Google. And we fire up the server again. Great, back to mixins. So we're taking a lat and long from point A and a lat and a long from point B. 
converting that into a string is an origin and destination. And then we're firing all of that off to, to a uh, get request to Google's API. And we're asking for a JSON response. We're then importing JSON from JSON library. And we're you know, converting results into a new variable called directions by using JSON. And then we're just going through the JSON response and pulling out everything that we need. So we're pulling out the roots. Well, actually, we're, we're just looking for root from the roots and the legs. And then we've got origin, destination, distance, and duration. And then we're um, using list comprehension here to get the distance, duration, and the HTML instructions for the uh, directions pull down the table. And then we're returning it as a dictionary to views. So that's what this is doing. And we're putting that all into context and sending it through to map.html. And I believe that's all we're really doing actually. So test models, no models in this. That's the mix-ins apps. Yeah, that's all we're doing. So if we now look into um, the base HTML, um, don't need to go into that in any great depth. These are the fonts we're getting straight from Google. That's the main CSS. J jQuery, we don't necessarily need that actually. It's just in there from, um, it's a hangover from the previous projects. And then we've got the main JS. So we'll focus the rest of the time on looking at the static files. So we've got four files in here. We won't look at the CSS, but we've got main JS. So this is the main JS and we've got a directions toggle here. All that's doing is it's showing and displaying the directions as and when you click that hyperlink. So that's the only JS we've got that's, uh, that I've written there. And the rest of it is, um, this is the JavaScript we've got straight from Google. So you're doing a get script API call with our API key. And this is what we're using. So your autocomplete A, so that's point A and that's point B. So what we're doing is we're using this function here called init autocomplete, which is being called as soon as the page loads. And we are creating a new autocomplete variable here um, for the ID, which is ID Google address A in the HTML document. So if I open that up as well, that would be in the root. Um, so you can see here that we've got, this is the ID, ID Google address A, this is ID Google address B, and then we've got four hidden inputs here. This is what holds the longitude and latitude for each point. So as this um, JavaScript file here places, as this does the autocomplete, what it calls is the on place change. So as you make a change, so as you do a keystroke, um, it then calls this function here. And this just works out if it's point A or point B. And then it does a geocoder. So it's using the Google Maps.geocoder. And it's uh, if it can find the geo coordinates, it adds the longitude and latitude to the, to the two hidden elements. The two hidden elements are based on this piece of logic here. And then it calls calculate root. So it'll only calculate root if we scroll down. It'll only calculate root if the, the, the inputs are all complete. So you need to have a point A and point B for it to call this. And then what it does, it uh, encodes the parameter, the query string, adds it to the URL, and then redirects you to that URL. It's got a console log there, we don't need that. So in this case, the URL is map, forward slash map, with a uh, question mark for the query string, plus the encoded query string that's uh, being completed here, and then it relocates. So that's what's happening in places. The other one is Google Maps. So when Google, so when the Maps URL is opened, it fires this API here with the key. It's using the Places library, and then it's calling Google Maps event Maps event load init map. And this is the init map function. So you've got the direction service and the direction render, and we're rendering it into the in, uh, element map root, which is in Map HTML. And the map root is in the map container. There we go, map root. So that's the only, only element that we've got in there. Whilst we're in the HTML, you can see that we're passing through the Google API from the back end, longitude, latitude from the two points. Then we've got the origin destination, which is, that's a string, but that is, that, that is the two points rendered into a string in the back end and brought through as an origin and a destination. 
and the directions is the, um, the text that we've converted from the JSON response in the mixy. So in Google Places J, no, not Places, we want Maps.js. Once we've initiated the map here, we then calculate the distance route here, which is the function calculate and display route. It takes in direction service and directions display as arguments. And what we then do is we calculate the route. Origin is the origin that we pulled through from the back end. Destination, destination. Now these, all of these um, parameters, there's, there's 101 of them actually on Google. I may even have the page open. If not, we'll quickly search. Directions API. So if we get, uh, get in directions, if we scroll down on this page here. So it's uh, developers.google.com slash maps slash documentation slash directions, get directions. So this is essentially, this is the request that we're making in the mixings. And you've got optional parameters here. So it defaults to driving. So it assumes that if you're making this call that you're actually driving from point A to point B, but you can add different modes. Uh, you've got language, you can avoid tolls, highways, ferries. So you can really drill down on how you want the directions to be rendered out. Uh, departure time, arrival time, region. So there's so many different uh, parameters you can pull off from Google. I've just focused on the origin, the destination, the travel mode being driving, although it defaults to that anyway. So the function response and status. So if the status is okay, then you, um, you pull out the response here as set directions. And if it's not okay, then you get an alert. So the direction request failed due to X and then you can then redirect to root actually. Let's uncomment that. There we go. And that's it. They're the two JavaScript files. So they're doing the um, line share of the, um, the front end. Uh, a lot of the, the code has been pulled straight off of Google and I've just used these, this documentation here to write the, the mix in and the JavaScript. So that's all there is to it really. There is one other thing actually, before I um, stop the video you may find that the map doesn't render on your HTML. So if I go to map.html, I was, when I was writing this project, I did find that the map wasn't rendering. So the, the HTML was there when I was drilling down in the inspection panel, the HTML was there. There wasn't any errors at all. However, you couldn't, you couldn't see it. And that was because there was an error in the CSS. So you need to make sure you explicitly put in the CSS file. I can't see it, there we go. Uh, we've got the map container here. I had to add that map container to the CSS here, so the body HTML, height 100%, and then I added this piece here, which was, um, this is the ID of the uh, map element that Google was using, and I've put height 75%. And that was all I needed to do to get the map rendered out. So back to the project, demo routine, let's just put another two addresses in here, 456. Let's go Birmingham and go 654. Let's go London and then we'll reroute here. There we are. Birmingham through to London. What have we got? 184 kilometers. Click here for directions. And that's it. That's the project. That's all there is to it. So um, thank you for watching. If you like, please can you subscribe and like. It's very, very helpful. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.